morning. It is day 16 and we are back in Paris. We had a great flight from Lisbon to Paris and last night we met up with the Plucky Maidens group for the first time and we had a beautiful dinner. This will be my first time trying red risotto. So instead of doing it with a white wine, like it's very common, they make it with a red wine. Merci. And Jesse got fish and chips. This looks so good. It's got huge chunks of Parmesan. Ooh, this is hot. I have to wait to eat it. And we went and saw the Eiffel Tower light up. So that was really fun. We got to cheer champagne at the Eiffel Tower as it was lighting up. Merci beaucoup. We got our champagne. We're here with Plucky Maidens. Something exciting is about to happen. Cheers, Pam, to Plucky Maiden. To Plucky. To Plucky. To Plucky. Oh, to Plucky. To Plucky. <laughs> Everyone's got their phones out, capturing the moment. So beautiful. We're really excited to be here with this group, and the next four days are pretty much going to be just packed with fun and flea markets. And I don't even know where we are going today. That's one of the things I love about going on these trips, where other people plan them. You're kind of just along for the ride and to have fun, and it's going to be exciting to see where we go in the next four days. I know of a lot of the flea markets here, but I know Pam's specialty is taking you to off the beaten path places and things that a lot of people don't know about. It. Pam speaks fluent French so that makes me feel really comfortable being here in Paris with her because we are just learning the littlest bit of French. It's been fun to use while we've been here but it's nice to know that we're here with someone who speaks fluent French. Okay let's head out and see where we're off to today. Look at how giant these meringues are. Wow. This entire bakery smells so good. Hey. We're headed to the bus, which is gonna take us to our first flea market. And look at how cute these little streets are. This is near the hotel. A lot of the shops are open right now, but they were open last night. And we're excited to spend the next couple days in this area and get to know a lot of these restaurants and cafes and bakeries. Ooh, we might have to come back and get some fresh fruit this afternoon. Looks delicious. White asparagus. Huh, I've never seen that. just arrived at one of Pam's secret spots that she takes everyone on her tour and it looks like there's a big vegetable and fruit market and then over here that looks like the good stuff oh this is gonna be fun we are at an off the radar flea market oh my goodness look at those bowls right there they're beautiful but I'm following Pam to her favorite vendor if they're here but I'm very easily sidetracked ah. Okay, she said that her favorite vendor is not here yet because it's a little bit early, which is a pro tip. Always get to the flea market early. So we're gonna just dive right in. We're looking for mid-century modern. So that's our main goal is to find a little mid-century piece. Oh my word, look at these. They're not mid-century modern, but <laughs> those are beautiful. Look at that. You can bring some little dip or salsa out and have a handle to carry it. Perfectly chippy. Those are beautiful. Let's see what else we got over here. Oh, here's a little mid-century cup. I've seen this pattern before. I can't remember what this brand is, but I think it says, there it is, right there. Culver, that's right. This is Culver. This might sound kind of dark and weird, but I think something like this, if it opened, would be beautiful to put like a pet's ashes in. Oh, this is pretty. Like that one. 
because it's just on a little sketch pad paper. I think my favorite art is art that was never meant to necessarily be seen. Like student art. Yeah, student art or... Art class in college and you sketch the model. Yeah. Charcoal. Mm -hmm. Or even pieces that are like a draft of like, maybe they have a concept and they're still trying to figure out what they want to do. That was really neat at the Louvre when we saw the one that wasn't finished. I love that stuff. Spotted a pretty old textile right here. Oh, my mom still has a box like this. It's much larger on her piano and she's had it my entire childhood. That reminds me of it. This is pretty. I want to display it for everyone. It's a nice little table runner size. Nicely faded. It'd be easy to pack. Some stains. Yeah, some imperfections. Let's keep looking. We got a lot of flea market to look at, so. We're right, halfway through this trip. We're halfway through the trip and we're like one tenth of the way through the market. Look at this wine bottle holder. This is beautiful. Okay, it's a wine bottle holder with grapes on it. Oh, little sun cuff. I like that. Look at this little owl. He's very cute. Oh my gosh, I know what this is. This is a little designer mid-century, I think Walter Bossy Burrow. And I think he normally has a couple little things right there. We're gonna see how much that's like. Yours already. <laughs> <laughs> it's of course. so trashed. I've had it. Oh, I love it. But look, Naga hide. Actual oh. Naga hide. Wow. Oh my word. It's beautiful. I got it at the Goodwill 25 years ago, probably. It's amazing. I can't get rid of it. No, you shouldn't. Yeah. It's very so special. trash, but I love it. Look what I found. <laughs> little brass burrow. Awesome. Isn't it cute? Perfect. Yeah. this little camel. My mom just sent me a picture from Israel and they just saw, I think their first camel in Israel yesterday. This little guy's missing a few parts. He doesn't have his horns. I'm not sure what goes in there, but cute shape, right? which is nice. That'll make it easier for transporting. I don't have to worry about it getting too crinkled up. Let's see how much this is. Oh, this is a Yugoslavian piece. That's so fun. I don't have one like this. Do I need this? Does this need to come home with me? Maybe. Let's see how much it is first. Tiny vases. Oh, what is this? This is not a vase, is it? 
Is this top? Is this maybe a pipe or something? I have no idea. Huh, funny. I thought it was gonna be like the tiniest, adorable little weed pot face. This is beautiful. That would sure look beautiful in Little Italy. I need to send home a container, you guys. I really do. These are the pieces I'm gonna make an offer on. I got the little burrow, beautiful carved wood spoon. I decided to not get the box since I kind of have a thing for the little bowls, the wedding cups, and these two little pieces of art. I just gotta find the right person to ask how much. So this vendor does complete clear outs and there are just boxes and boxes of things that are brought here directly from the home. You guys, if you wanna do a trip to Paris, I am telling you, you should go with Pam. This is already fantastic and this is just day one for us. Look at this place. It's amazing. We got the lot for 30 euro, not too bad especially because I think this is a little designer one. I'm not positive because a lot of his pieces were the black, but either way, it's super cute. So not bad. I like the little paintings too. This is a beautiful French pan, super heavy. This is one of my new things I'm obsessed with, French copper. They're on canvas too. Oh, she's so pretty. Wow. Those are really neat. Wonder what they're from. Those are fun. have gotten Ellery a vintage pipe here in France. Look at all those pipes. and 20, 40, for two, say 30. Oh, that's funny. I thought it was something brutalist and it was three little bear heads. Made in France. 
That's funny. That's really pretty. A little brass owl ring. It's missing something. minutes to get it out and I had to take one of the little loops off but look I got the butterfly I wanted out of the messy pile I'm looking for a lot of things that I can rework with jewelry that I already have back home and I think one of the things I'm looking for the most is old brass because they have a lot of beautiful pendants that are not sterling so I think I'm gonna get this they make beautiful pieces when you're repurposing things look at that I could have had a butterfly that easy <laughs> I guess we're going to have to. asked for 140 euro for all of it and we agreed upon 100 so I'll show you up close all the pieces that I got for just 100 euro. I love these little candle holders but I promised myself I wasn't going to pick up any brass that I find back home and when I was in London remember how I picked up the little kitties and I wasn't quite sure what they were for I thought maybe they were chopsticks chopstick rests well several people pointed out they were knife rests and so here's the little puppy version of the little kitty rests look there's another little puppy version these are even cuter look at these they're so cute maybe that's what the swans are for too that ring is beautiful beautiful I might have to look at this one you can tell this vendor is gonna be a little bit more expensive but they've got much higher quality pieces most of what I was just looking through was costume Boxes 
and boxes to go through. You guys, we're gonna be here forever. Did you find anything good yet? Oh, yes. Good. Oh, uh, merci. He took the art out of the frame for me. I took a picture of the back of it so I can figure out where it was framed originally, but that way I can roll it up and take it in my luggage with me. I'm so excited. What's this land wow. situation? Something I can't take in my luggage? Oh, my Atlanta. That is beautiful. It looks like a Moroccan pottery, but it's a lamp. What is this ancient piece of art right here? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh, a pretty painting. Beautiful. 64. Oh, no. Gorgeous. And this too? 20 euro. 20. We want them all, but we can't have them all. I love this one. It's so unique too. It's so kind of pitch. And yeah. And I like this one over here too. Sign 54. Just when I thought I was done, I found more boxes to dig through. And look at this beautiful wooden spoon. I'm kind of collecting a lot of different spoons for my upcoming YouTube cooking channel. I think this will look really pretty. Yeah, get getting down and digging. Yeah. Like, here's a bracelet just in a box. So funny. I love this. Pam, you know the best flea markets. Ooh, I see treasures down there. Okay, I gotta put the camera down. In a perfume bottle? Oh, yeah. And then you bring the perfume? Yeah, and then put it on your wrist. Because it's glass. It's beautiful. It's sweet, isn't it? Very, very. Look at the treasures Pam found. So pretty. Oh, there's a couple of them. And this sweet little leather, probably hold, held uh, hand rolled cigarettes, I'm thinking. Oh, Not sure, but. Maybe a lighter, too. Looks maybe like a lighter. The size of a yep. lighter. But it's very efficient, yeah. as you can see. You could put all kinds of things in there. Exactly. <laughs> big as I'm looking for. I'm hoping for to find a vintage Italian leather bag at some point on this trip. Oh my gosh, is this art in here? This is unreal. It is. Let's see if we can find another beautiful nude sketch. Wow. Ah. This girl want to make it, you know, she wants to make a pattern. Oh yeah. I used to I like used a little to cut, mini dress form? Yeah, I used to cut uh, cut my dad's dress socks up. Oh, really? And make them, you know, oops, excuse me, yeah. sleeveless. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, topless for my Revlon doll. <laughs> Clutched it here. Topless? Or strapless. Strapless. Hey. Not topless. Yeah, strapless. <laughs> Ooh, what's in this one? More sewing notions in here. Okay, that was a little unexpected. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Ooh, we're getting to some cool old things down here. All right, we're getting down on our knees. If I don't knock things over. We've got a beautiful little bowl. Some cute little old books. What is this? Oh, I think he maybe had a pipe or a cigarette he was smoking, but he lost it. Wine bottle opener. This one's kind of nice. I bet you wouldn't lose this because it's so big. A little bunny rabbit. All right, all right. Vintage camera. I wonder what pictures are on this. I think it'd be so fun to develop a a vintage camera and just see what's on there. Although, might see things you don't want to see. You never know. Fishing tackle. All right, this is interesting. Oh, pretty little vases. They need to come out and, oh, they're already broken. Okay. All right, I think that's it for this box. Let's go move on to the next one. so fun look it's a little pipe candle holder i've never seen that before i'm having a good eye i think for bulls on this trip which is awesome i think it has a bull painted on it it does hey that's the same signature as something else i saw today i'm not going to get it because it's a cup but that's cool please tell me you're not going to decorate the bomb shelter with that kind of art yeah <laughs> I just think it's interesting. It is. I like his colorful outfit. Beautiful this 
display. We came back for the Greek food. We're gonna see if we can get some takeaway. The flea market today was amazing. I found so many treasures and I know a lot of the other ladies that were on the trip today found treasures too. We had a really good time getting to know a lot of the vendors there at the market that Pam has known for years. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask me, what was the flea market you went to? And I can't tell you, it's a secret. And the reason why is because Pam has spent literally years coming here to Paris, getting to know all of the vendors and finding the best flea markets and sales to take her people too. So if you want to learn more about the Paris tours or the London tours, then go to pluckymaidens.com and Pam will tell you a little bit more about her trips and what all they include. I highly, highly recommend doing it. This is only day one and I'm already having a great time and I found so many great treasures. So let's go pull those out now so much for pacing myself. I feel like I went a little bit crazy today. At least most of it is jewelry and really small items. But I did get a piece of rolled up art and these two cute little art pieces here that are on wood. So they don't, they don't roll up, but they don't take up that much room and I don't have to really worry about them getting bent. So that's nice. First, let me show you these little vintage Chinese food dogs. I thought these were beautiful. They're small and I'm trying not to bring home too much brass, but you know, they're really cute. And I think these are antique. They're pretty old. There is a little pair of them. And then I don't know if this is a Walter, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, B-O-S-S-E, Walter Bossy. That's how I say it at least. Peace or not. When I Google images of his little brass burrows, the salt and pepper shakers that would have been on this side were in a little bit different of a ring, but then his wooden one where he has a solid wood burrow does have a brass ring like this so i'm not sure kind of looks authentic either way he's super cute so i just need to find salt and pepper shakers to fit in there or maybe i'll just put them by my bedside and stick two chapsticks in there that could work too these were two sterling pieces sorry about my nails i already need a manicure i learned on this trip that my nails grow really fast because my niece had like no grow out in the 10 days and look what I got going on. Okay, gross, sorry. I just had to apologize. I am aware that they look terrible, so I apologize. This is a pretty little carnelian sterling silver pill box and stamped there on the back. And then this is a pretty little bohemian fringe pendant with a black onyx stone. I got these two from the same vendor. And then I got this lion, cause obviously I like lions, but I got him because when I was in London, I picked up that lion door knocker piece because me and the vendor kept laughing laughing about his little eyebrows. And then here in Paris, I found another one where he looks very concerned. So I had to get him. He was only a few dollars. And then this is a pretty little, what is that, an alpaca llama? I'm not quite sure, but I liked this. And I think I'm actually going to try soldering on a ring so that I could turn it into a pendant or possibly drilling two little holes so I can attach chains from the side. He's gonna go into my jewelry repurposing box. So might be a little bit, but I thought he was a fun one to have. And then these two, I don't know if this is Yugoslavian or not. It looks very similar to the carvings on my wedding cups, but I love wooden spoons and I love carved anything. So I got both of these for my upcoming cooking vlogs because I thought this would be fun. I could put little salt or herbs that I measure out in here. And then this one could actually hang on the wall too, which I'm not gonna do because I'm going for less clutter, but I thought those were fun. So these two are for myself to keep. And then you saw these, the two little paintings. And then I got all of this jewelry jewelry from those massive tables that had mostly costume jewelry. I actually do think this might be sterling. I think right there are two little stamps that they might have missed because I think they had separated out most of their sterling. Something that I always tell people is look for stamps in all the places. You might think it's going to be on the back or on the clasp. Sometimes it's on the front of the jewelry piece too. So I don't actually have my loop with me. I could be wrong. Either way, I thought it was a pretty necklace, but I'm pretty Pretty sure it's sterling. And then this was kind of funny. I dug really hard. I spent like five minutes getting this butterfly out only to find another butterfly that I could have grabbed very easily. This one is not signed, but it turns out that this was well worth the five minutes of digging because check it out. It says 
well, W-O-L-O-C-H, Paris. This is actually a designer piece and I looked them up online. It looks like several of them are selling for around $100 to $125. So I ended up paying, I think he originally said $120 for everything and I got him down to $100. So this one necklace will pay for the whole lot. And I thought this was a pretty piece too with the beads. I like any, anything that's fringy. This was a fun costume one. Look at all the swirls. I think that one's cool. Kind of almost looks like cobras to me, like a cobra snake with a coiled up tail. And then this is just a beautiful tribal piece. And I have lots of chains back at home that are not sterling, so I can just pop this on that. And then I like to repurpose these because they always have the coolest clasps on them. So I'm gonna use that in my jewelry repurposing. And then I think I bought something naughty on pur not on purpose, not on purpose. I just thought, oh, this is a really cool, you know, locket thingy, pillbox, perfume thing. How does it open here? It looks kind of ancient, so I thought that was a good sign. I can't even get it open now. Oh, there we go. You tilt back the top. So I thought that looks kind of cool and old. And then I didn't realize till I got home it had this little spoon. So I think it's for bad things. I could be wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's for drugs. Okay, so moving on, a little brass owl ring. And then I thought this was beautiful. It's just a vintage brass bracelet, but I loved all the detail on it. And then this one also says Paris on the back. I can't read that other word. Do any of you know what that says? I saw like C, Tinda, I don't know. Tell me if anybody knows what that says. Something Paris. That was kind of cool. Almost looks like it's meant to be super old, like medieval times. And then this is a piece by the Turag people. And I saw some rings in London that were also by that tribe. And this is really, really heavy. I know you can't tell, but this is probably heavier than anything I would like to wear on my arm. But when I started looking it up online, I'm pretty sure that this is actually an ankle bracelet. So I think you could probably have a little bit more weight down there than on your hand. Beautiful detailing, gorgeous piece. And that was everything for the hundred dollars there. And then I have two more art pieces that I have to pull out so you can see. Hold on one second. I got this pretty lady. She was not signed, but I just thought she was beautiful. And then I got this piece, which I'm really excited about. So when we were in Paris earlier on this trip, we went to Moulin Rouge. And in one of the, I don't know if you call it a scene, there was kind of like a circus thing going on. Anyways, there was kind of a circus, there was kind of a circus thing going on. And this guy right here and the crowd watching just kind of made me think of that. Anyways, so that is the piece. I thought it was really pretty. And we're also right now kind of by the catacombs and those look like skulls to me. So it just kind of felt fitting for today for Paris, I guess. And it's got, it's 116 out of 115 or 150. And then it's signed here. I haven't done any research yet on who this artist is, but hopefully by the time the video comes out, I will have found out a little bit more about it. So that is my haul for the very first flea market in Paris. And now we're gonna just figure out how to pack all this away in our luggage. After the flea market, we stopped and got some amazing Greek food. And now we're just here back at the hotel, chilling, relaxing, showing you all the treasures we got. And then we're gonna go out for a very special evening here soon. So I'm gonna go take a quick nap and I will see you guys in a little bit. Jesse's gonna get one of these. I think I'm gonna get the quiche. That actually looks really good. It all looks really good. Look at all the pastries. Oh my word. I walked right by all of these too. I didn't even see them. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Have you ever in your entire life seen a cuter little dog in the window? Look at his face. He's so cute, he looks so happy. We are sitting out on our little terrace. There's no tables out here, so I'm not sure if we're supposed to be out here, but we're out here anyways. And I've got my wine in fire my coffee mug. Fire department, that'd be scary. Like out on the ledge. That'd be terrible. You got your little sandwich there. Uh, Pam said that these were really good. They're basically like meaty grilled cheese sandwiches. Let's give them a close up. Croque Monsieur. This one's Sewer? probably not like as good as the ones I've seen. You think so? Yeah, but they're actually like grilled. Oh, because it's not grilled like a panini? 
And then I got the vegetable quiche and of course my wine and my coffee mug from our hotel. And yeah, we're gonna just sit here. Is it good? It's cheap too. Oh yeah, it was cheap. Sorry about the siren. Oh no, it's the fire truck. They did come for us. <laughs> Jesse wasn't kidding. <laughs> Better not turn. Right. Oh, we're good. Right. That was a close call. That was so close. They were cheap. We gotta be cheap sometimes. I know it looks like we're having a lot of fancy meals, but we're trying to have really affordable meals for a lot of them too. Under 10 euro. Under 10 euro for everything. Yeah. yeah, not including the wine. That was leftover from the restaurant. We asked the guy at the restaurant if we could take our leftover wine because there's no way I'm drinking a bottle by myself. So he gave us the cork and said, no problem, anything you wish. We scarfed down our dinner and we are ready to go. Jesse's laughing. I scarfed, I was eating it really fast. I, all of a sudden I realized, I was like, we have 20 minutes until we need to go meet them. Scarfed's not a word? Like you scarfed down your food, is that not a thing? I don't know. Anyways, we ate our dinner and now we're going on a boat ride. I just went down seven flights of stairs and then ran seven flights of stairs back up because I forgot something. But it turns out that our boat plans got canceled. So now tonight is an on our own night. And my sister and I planned pretty much this entire 30 day trip. She really helped me with those first 10 days while her and my nieces were here. And we spent months planning all the activities, where we were going. We made reservations for certain restaurants, sometimes three or four months in advance. So I'm exhausted from planning. So when the boat tour just got canceled for tonight, it's rescheduled for Sunday night. I I told Jesse, I go, dude, tonight is all you. I was like, I don't care where we go. I don't care what we do. I just want to be with you and let's go have fun in Paris. So tonight we are going on Jesse's plans and we'll see how this turns out. I have a lot of faith in him. He usually has pretty good ideas. <laughs> So far, so good. Right now we're just going on a walk and this is the cemetery right here that's right by our hotel. Unfortunately, we can't see it from this side, only from above. So we're gonna see if it's open at the entrance down here. And if not, we're just gonna keep walking and see where our feet take us. Where are they gonna take us, babe? <laughs> Ended up in Luxembourg Gardens. We're gonna go check out this little area down here that we went to the other day. See if it's less crowded. And then we're gonna go get a drink and take a little break before we keep moving on. Oh, maybe we're too late. Maybe it's closing. Whoa, I think it's closing. <laughs> I think it's closing. Get out of here. While we were hoping for it to be less crowded, which it is, we could hang tight and risk it and be the last ones out of here. Yeah, I think we should camp. We should hide behind <laughs> one of the bushes. Camp out. There you go. Go hide in one of those green boxes. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we might get sent home. It's nothing like it's not a vacation unless you get thrown in jail. Oh, I don't like that kind of vacation. You get thrown in jail, then like, I know I had a good vacation. <laughs> I don't like your kind of vacations.
Laura, where are all the people? <laughs> they shoot them away with the whistles. Yeah. It had nothing to do with me this time. Well, we rented out Luxembourg Gardens. For yeah, the private tour. That was my plan for tonight. Oh, like, you did good, babe. You I did good. Contacted a couple people I know in the French <laughs> government. And down the park. You're like for Laura, my yeah. love. Oh, right. so sweet, babe. Oh, you failed. There's two people right there. No, my friends. Oh, okay. Those are your buddies. <laughs> we stumbled upon this. We haven't even looked it up yet. I don't know where we are, but we're somewhere old and beautiful. <laughs> oh, there's lions. Let's go look at the lions. So pretty. It's a church. It's a church? It's a church with a facade by Serban Okay, it's a church. And how old is it? Can you click on it and go to Wikipedia? I don't know if it does that. Hold on, I'm gonna take a couple awesome photos real quick while he Wikipedia's it. So it is the second largest church in Paris behind Notre Dame, and it is only slightly smaller. Construction on this church, the one we're looking at, was uh, began in 1646. 1646. Oh, that's actually not as old as I thought it was going to be. Still beautiful, nonetheless. Just oh. old, not ancient. We made it all the way to the Louvre, which is really beautiful at night. And look, it goes so far, all the way down there. This is just one side of it and it goes all the way down there. It's amazing, I wish we could have spent more time there, but we'll just have to come back to Paris. And that's what we were supposed to be doing tonight. Dude, that's a big boat. Wow. Wow. There's another one. the party spot here in Paris. Check this out. Look at how packed that boat is. It's like a nightclub boat. And then that's the line to get in. When you turn a corner and that is your view. Not bad, huh? We're gonna go and watch the tower light up. It's gonna light up here in a little bit. So you can't ever see it too many times. So we're gonna go see it again. Looking for a screw top. Here we go. Oh, they got half bottles? We're looking for a screw top half bottle. Look how cheap they are, $3. Straight out of the thing. And you don't even need to buy glasses. I like it. Let's do it. Sounds great. Chocolate. Simply salted. Cheers to doing this again. So we decided to end up here at the Eiffel Tower again because you can never see this too many times. And not only are we here for the midnight showing when it gets all flashy, but it's also the launch of my first Friday sale at midnight here in Paris. It's 3 p.m. Pacific time back home, which is hilarious. So when we realized that, we decided let's go ahead and launch the sale here from the Eiffel Tower. So Jesse, when those lights start sparkling, that is your cue to turn on the sale. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you set? I'm set. Okay, don't go until the Eiffel Tower goes. When the Eiffel Tower goes, the sail launches. There it, oh, there it is. It's starting. Oh, there it is. All right, first Friday sail is live and the Eiffel Tower is lit.
We're noticing that there's an airplane right here. I don't know if you can see past the sparkles. One of my best memories in my life is when I was flying to Italy and I flew over Paris and it was, you know, it wasn't sparkling, but it was lit up and it's one of the, my best memories. So hopefully those people are not watching a movie and snoozing right now. You better look out your window, people. And that's a wrap.